Hey guys, Charles here. Let's do 2021 set one FRQ number three. And it's flower as an open economy with a flexible exchange rate. The natural rate, the NRU, is 5%. The frictional rate of unemployment is 4%. So our frictional unemployment is 4%. And the actual rate of unemployment is 7%. So what we need to know is that inside your natural rate of unemployment, you have not only frictional, frictional, but also structural. So our natural rate is 4% frictional, 1% structural. Our actual rate, though, of unemployment is 7%. We can see that our actual rate of unemployment is greater than the natural rate. So this implies that we are dealing in a recession. Anytime we're in a recession, we have what we call cyclical unemployment. So our, we always have a natural rate of unemployment. There's always people frictionally unemployed looking for jobs or being let go because their job's not needed or because of technology. This happens all the time. And that 5% is our natural rate. But now we've got something special going on. We're in a recession. That extra 2%, that 7% minus that natural rate of 5%, that 2% there is our cyclical rate, if that makes sense. Uh, all right. What is the numerical value? Oh, we just answered it. 2%. Easy. B, assume the foreign demand for lavender oil produced in flower land increases. What will happen to each of the following in the short run? Uh, well, if more foreigners are buying our lavender oil, that implies that exports are increasing. If exports are going up, we know aggregate demand's going up. Uh, I think that's about as straightforward as you can get. I don't know what other kind of explanation needs to go in there. Uh, cyclical unemployment would obviously decrease, right? As we move away from that recession and back to full employment. Let's just draw the graph real quick, All right? Here we are with our aggregate demand to the left of long run. Here we are in a recessionary gap. And then as there's more exports, it pushes that aggregate demand back toward, we don't know if it goes back to full employment. Doesn't matter. We know as we go back to full employment, that cyclical unemployment has to go down, so it would decrease easy enough. All right, uh, table above, basket quantities, prices, two goods. This is obviously a GDP CPI question. Assume 2019 is the base year. Based on the data in the table, calculate the price index for 2020. So let's do this in sort of a step-by-step -step manner here. Um, First of all, this is 2019, quantity and price. We know define nominal GDP. It's always price times quantity. So nominal GDP for 2019 is 3 times 40 for a 12. So 120, let's just do it here and I'll erase it. 120 and 4 times 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 80. So it looks like nominal GDP is 200 for 2019. 2019 is our base year. Right? If you know the base here, and you can figure out nominal, you also know real GDP. Understand that real equals nominal in the base year. So our real and nominal are exactly the same thing in the base year. And we also know our CPI or our price index. We could call CPI a price index. We could have called it an deflator. It doesn't matter. They're all the numbers are used the exact same way. So our CPI here is always 100 in the base year, right? Uh, for year two, we do nominal GDP, same kind of way. We're just going to do, and let me see if I can erase a little bit of this. Let's get rid of that, get rid of that. And let's choose a little different color here just to be fancy. We use the quantity. Again, it's just price times quantity for nominal GDP. So our nominal GDP for 220 was 4 times 40, which is 160, 4 times 25, which is 100. So our nominal GDP would have been 260. Can we see that? Excellent. Just price times quantity. 
but they want to know what our real GDP, well, we need to know what our real GD is so we can fill in what our CPI is right here, which is our price index, right? So we're going to take the quantity of our 2020, right? And we're going to take the prices in the base year. So again, it is quantity, right? It's still price times quantity for real GDP, but we're using quantity in the current year that we're talking about, 2020, and prices of the base year, right? So uh, four times four, still 160. No, sorry, don't do it wrong, Charles. Three times 40, well, we know it's 200, right? Because it's the same thing as 2019. Prices in the base year and quantities haven't changed. So now that we've got our real and our nominal for year two, we know our formula for finding the CPI is nominal GDP divided by real GDP times 100. We plug that in, 260 over 200 times 100. I believe that gives us 130. All right, and this implies our CPI went from 100 in the base year to 130 in the next year. We've had 30% increase in inflation. That's what that extra 30 there shows us. Um, all right, if nominal income in Flowerland increased by 20% from 2000, will the standard of living of the average citizen increase, decrease, stay the same, et cetera, et cetera. So, Think about it like this. Um, sorry, pay attention to what I'm doing here. Um, citizens' incomes increased by 20%. So their incomes went up by 20%, right? Let's just say they all got raises. Incomes went up by 20%, but then the price level or the inflation the price of everything went up by 30%. That's going to give us a decrease of income of 10%. These guys have lost 10% of what they can buy because of inflation. Inflation went up. They got a raise. Woo, nice. But the raise was only 20%. Um, and inflation was 30%. So their actual standard of living would have decreased and we would explain that, that as when inflation is higher than income rises, um, citizens are worse off. And we would like to, I'd like to give them that 10% so they know I can do the math. Uh, all right, guys, I hope that makes sense. And this makes, let's play a little game before I run away from you. Let's say a wages, go, and it's same kind of scenario, wages go up by 10%, you get a raise, price level goes up by 20%. We should recognize that your real wage, what you can actually buy, went down by 10%. Kind of the same situation going on here. If we're talking about incomes, we're talking about wages, right? Inflation goes up. It's going to, anytime there's higher inflation than a raise, you've lost something. You're worse off. You can buy less stuff. All right. Um, be safe. Take care. See you soon.